Welcome to the Exploratorium and part four of Full Spectrum Science Sound. We're going to talk about harmonics in this segment. In the previous segments, we've talked about the terminology of sound, we've talked about resonance, we've talked about interference, and now we're going to talk about harmonics. Um, harmonics is an interesting thing. It, mostly when you talk about musical instruments, we can talk about waves and how they fit inside of those instruments. So let's take a look at that, and we're going to reduce instruments down to their most simplest, their simplest possible forms. For instance, uh, a closed pipe, an organ pipe. That's a very uh, simple kind of instrument. And the way the wave will fit inside of this pipe depends on the length of the pipe and the speed of sound and that kind of thing. So in this diagram here, you're seeing the longest wave that'll fit inside this pipe. Now there are some constraints as to how waves fit inside things. If you have one end right here that's open, this end here is free to vibrate. So the air is free to move around right here. On the very inside of the pipe, we have a closed end at the other end right down here. That, that end is not free to vibrate, and so the air can't move there. So we have two different kinds of situations. We have a place where air can't move in the middle of the pipe, we call that a node, and we have air right here, which is free to move and must move, which is called an anti-node. And you can see that in this diagram right here, at the closed end of the pipe, the air can't move. Now, again, in reality, sound is not this back and forth kind of wave. It's a longitudinal wave, which we talked about in segment one, which you can go back and check out. But using the illustration of this kind of wave makes it much easier for you to see. So an anti-node is where air is free to move, where you see the wave moving up and down, up and down, and at the closed end of the tube, it's not moving at all, and we call that a node. So here we have the node at the closed end of the pipe and the anti-node at the open end of the pipe. And so this is about a quarter of a wave. In this case, on this pipe, I can fit um, the, the note C above middle C into this pipe precisely. So if I hit this tuning fork, maybe Mary can come over here and, and help us with the sound. This can barely hear the tuning fork here, but if I put it near the pipe, can you hear that out there? The pipe is resonating at that note. It won't resonate in any other note. <clears throat> and that's the lowest note that'll fit inside this pipe. Well. If we are constrained to having an anti-node at the open end and a node at the closed end, we can fit another par portion of a wave. And here's, well, let's take a look at here. So here again, we have an anti-node at one end of the pipe, a node at the uh, closed end of the pipe. Here's the next situation up. Here we still have an anti-node at the open end of the pipe. We still have a node at the closed end of the pipe, but we have more of the wave inside the pipe. As a matter of fact, now we have three quarters of the wave, whereas before we only had one quarter of the wave inside the pipe. So this is three times the fundamental, the lowest frequency that fits in that pipe, the one we had before. If I did that on this pipe here, this is 512 hertz, this tuning fork, I'd have to have a tuning fork that was three times as high to make this pipe resonate again at that, the next harmonic up. And if we just kind of fill, and so we have a node at one end of the pipe, an anti-node at the other end of the pipe, and we have a couple of anti-nodes and nodes in the middle too, which we really don't care much about. So let's fill that in so you can just sort of see what it looks like. So we have three quarters of the wave inside the tube now, not the full wave. And let's move on to the le next, the next and last one I want to show you. And here, again, on the closed end of the pipe, we have a node. On the open end of the pipe, we have an anti-node, but now we have five quarters of the wave inside the tube five times the original frequency. So this, the harmonics of this pipe are one, three, five, and so on, seven, nine, eleven. Uh, that's for a closed pipe. I want you to remember that odd harmonics go into this pipe. Let's take a look at it. We have node at one end of the pipe, we have an anti-node at the other end of the pipe, and a whole variety of nodes and anti-nodes in the middle. So that's a closed pipe. <clears throat> and again, if we look at that, we see one and a quarter waves inside that pipe five-fourths of a wave, five times the fundamental frequency, the lowest fundamental frequency. So that's a closed pipe, and um, 
just to review, here are the first three harmonics of that uh, pipe, one, three, and five. And those, you can find that on our exhibit floor in several exhibits. You can find it here in this organ pipe exhibit. You can find it in the pipes of Pan. You can find it in this other organ. We have two organ pipe exhibits on the floor, which is kind of nice. And uh, we have this exhibit here, which is uh, uh, used to be called Making the, the Invisible Visible. Uh, again, a closed pipe exhibit. Just places where you can find. Here's where the resonance point is, where the antinode is. It's fountains in this uh, exhibit. It's really beautiful. Uh, and then we have another uh, a pipe exhibit, pipe uh, that you can that resonates at various frequencies. You can actually see the resonance. So let's move on. This is now an open pipe. It's open at both ends. Here, we don't have a closed end. We have a pipe that has two open ends. And here, you'll notice that. Both ends, since they're open, have to have an anti-node at them. And the only way you can do that in an open pipe is to have a node in the middle. So here we have, again, open anti-nodes at both ends, a node in the middle. And so that is the lowest frequency. And that's half of the wave that's fitting inside this pipe. That's the lowest note that would fit inside here. And again, just to give you the, the picture filling it in, there's the picture of filling it in. That's half of a wave inside the pipe. Here's the next step up. Again, both ends must be anti-nodes because the, the ends are open and it's free to vibrate there. So here we have the anti-nodes at both ends. There's an anti-node in the middle as well. And the two nodes in the middle, places where it's not actually moving. You see where the nodes are there. And here we have one wave in the pipe. This is a complete wave in the pipe. So we started with how much in the pipe? Half a wave. And now we moved up to one wave. That's only double the frequency. So the next harmonic of an open pipe is, not, is double the lowest, wave, lowest frequency or the fundamental frequency. So an open pipe is different than a closed pipe. The closed pipe went one, three, five. Let's see what this pipe's going to do next. Here's the next one. Okay, now we have one and a half waves. That's, we have antinodes at both ends, a bunch of nodes and antinodes in the middle. The important part is that there's antinodes at both ends. And here we're, put, we're fitting one and a half waves in the tube. So we went one half, one, one and a half waves. That's one, two, three. So if the fundamental frequency is a certain frequency, the next harmonic is twice that, three times that. Remember the closed pipe was one, three, five. This pipe is one, two, three. So that takes care of um, open pipes, just reviewing real quickly. One, two, and three times the frequency inside that pipe. Antinodes at both ends. And you can find those on the floor. Um, if you have, for instance, a xylophone, that has both ends open. Both ends of that, of that wood block or that glass block or that steel block or aluminum block, they're free to vibrate. So before I go to the next one, I want to show you an example of an open, an open at both ends. This is just a piece of aluminum rod. And um, it's open at both ends. I'm going to hit this end of the rod, and Mary can, Mary can come over here and you'll be able to hear it. It's very high. So, uh, by the way, now this, I'm not going to, if I hit it this way, that is vibrating up and down, but if I'm, I'm going to hit it on the end this way, I'm going to create a longitudinal wave in this rod, which is much higher frequency. Let's try that again, wait a minute. I'm not very good at this. There we go. So that is the fundamental frequency. Very high note. The way the bar is vibrating this way. This is, remember, the lowest frequency had to have what in the middle? A node. That lets me hold it in the middle without any, without any uh, damping it out, because this is a node, and these are anti-nodes. If I touch over here, though, listen. I can damp it out because this is an anti-node. This is where it's actually vibrating. So that's the lowest harmonic. The next one up, let me go back up a slide here so we can, we can see that. The next one up, there we go. I wanted to review. There's the review. So the lowest frequency has a node in the middle, but you notice the next one up has an anti-node in the middle and two nodes. I'd have to hold it here and here, and now I'm going to need... Mary to help me with two things. 
Here, use this uh, hard rod to hit it. On the end. Much higher. That's twice the frequency. Can you hear that? It's almost distressingly. And if you touch it at the end, you damp it out. And if I touch it, hit it again, the middle is no longer a node. If I touch it here, I damp it out as well. So that's the second harmonic. And I could go up to the, I don't know if we can get the third harmonic. It's really hard. You have to hit it really. Okay, that's got, hang on. There we go. Three times the frequency. It's almost, it's almost dogs are now going to come in and, and uh, are probably hearing this. So again, harmonics, and this is in an open pipe. This is not a pipe, but this is an open-ended, like a xylophone. Okay. The last one I want to talk about are strings. Strings are not open at both ends. Strings are closed at both ends. But you might suspect that they're very similar to the open pipe, and they are. So here is a string. Since a string is held at both ends, both ends have to be what? A node. So you have a node at both ends, and the middle has to be an anti-node. That's the longest wave that'll fit on a string. Half, a, half of a wave, sort of like we saw in the open pipe. Here's the next one that fits, one whole wave. That's twice the original frequency. One half to one is double. And that has a node in the middle. And, an anti -node, and two antinodes and nodes at both ends. You have to have a node at both ends because it's held there. Can't move. And last but not least, let's just do one more for fun. Here is the next one up, one and a half waves on the string. That's three times the original frequency, the third harmonic. And there you again, you have nodes at both ends and a bunch of nodes and antinodes in the middle. And looks something like this, one and a half waves. One, two, three for strings and open pipes. And just to review, strings. And you can go out on our floor, and there are some good examples out on our floor of that. If you find this exhibit, the oscilloscope, you can see strings vibrating. It's very, very nice. By plucking them against a rotating drum of stripes, you can see the actual waves on the string. Very nice. Come to see that. And on the harmonic series wheel, you can play with all the harmonics and add them up. Because you can take various harmonics and add them up to co and combine them. And that's what gives instruments their color, their timbre. Uh, what makes an instrument sound like the instrument it is. Why an oboe sounds like an oboe and why a guitar sounds like a guitar has all, everything to do with the harmonics that are generated inside that instrument. And why people sound different because our har harmonics uh, generated by our voice uh, are different for everybody. If you listen to just vocal cords, which are happening right about here, I can feel my vocal cords. Everybody at home, put your hand on your throat and go, ah, I can hear you going, ah, now. You can feel it vibrate. Well, if you cut your head off right here, it would sound like a duck call. And it's the resonant chambers, your throat, and your mouth, and your tongue, and your teeth, and your lips that form the uh, resonance chambers and all the harmonics that make your voice yours. Everybody has a different voice because of the different harmonics. So that's all I have to say. Thank you very much for coming. I hope you enjoyed it. hope you'll come back to see all of our other webcasts. Bye.